Hi, my name is Chloe Bramble, and for my final project, I decided to focus on the global issue of women's reproductive rights. These rights include the right to contraception, abortion, fertility treatment, health care, and access to information. The Wilson Center cited that each year from 2015 to 2019, there were 121 million unintended pregnancies and 73 million abortions. Globally, 48% of all pregnancies were unintended and 61% of unintended pregnancies ended in abortion. 41% of women live under restrictive laws. In the U.S. alone, 90% of United States counties are without a single abortion provider. The inability to access safe and legal abortion care impacts 700 million women of reproductive age. According to the World Health Organization, 23,000 women die from unsafe abortions each year, and tens of thousands more experience significant health problems. Countries like Egypt, Iraq, Madagascar, the Philippines, and Honduras have abortions prohibited altogether, while countries like Brazil, Paraguay, Venezuela, Sudan, Iran, Afghanistan, and Syria ban abortion in all cases except to save the mother's life. Unsafe abortion is a leading but preventable cause of maternal deaths and morbidities. It can lead to physical and mental health complications and social and financial burdens for women, communities, and health systems. In addition to this, around 214 to 225 million women globally who want contraception are unable to access it. Much of the issues surrounding women's reproductive care stems from religion and certain religious beliefs. People are regularly refused reproductive health care because there are patients of religious hospitals that decline to provide sterilization, infertility treatments, and abortion, or because they work for religious employers that will not cover abortion or contraceptives in their insurance plans. In the U.S. in 2019, the Health and Human Services rule was finalized, allowing anyone who declared an objection based on religious or moral beliefs in a healthcare employment setting to claim that they face discrimination for refusing to assist with services including abortion. It also vastly expanded the individuals who could claim a religious or moral exemption and the types of actions considered discrimination, heavily penalizing employers found liable for actions that might include simply requiring a receptionist to schedule appointments. Just like the Health and Human Services rule, many other countries' laws are heavily dependent on religion. About half the world's Muslim-majority countries have a Shahira-based laws. Shahira is the ideal form of divine guidance that Muslims follow to live a righteous life. According to this form of law, the procedure of IVF and ET is acceptable. However, it can be performed only if it involves the husband and wife. It allows contraception practice only under some circumstances, and only in some special cases can abortion be performed. The Jewish attitude towards reproduction can be learned from the fact that the first commandment of God to Adam was to be fruitful and multiply. Like Islamic beliefs, Judaism allows the practice of all techniques of assisted reproduction when it originates from a wife and husband. According to Judaism, abortion is forbidden unless the mother's life is in danger. About 1.3 billion people in the world practice Catholicism. According to the Roman Catholic doctrine, the primary purpose of marriage is procreation. The act of using contraceptives destroys the potential of producing new life by sexual intercourse and violates the purpose of marriage and therefore is a sin against nature. The Christian tradition views the embryo as a human being since conception and therefore abortion is strictly forbidden. Aside from religion, many other minorities are specifically targeted when it comes to reproductive health care. Sixteen Euro European Union member states do not provide undocumented migrant women with full equal access to affordable maternal health care during pregnancy. And 11 European Union member states discriminate against lesbian couples and single women and do not allow them equal access to assisted reproduction. When you limit access to reproductive health, you force the woman to search harder to find this care, which typically means a much higher expense. More than 3 million women live more than 100 miles from the nearest abortion clinic, and the women who seek abortions tend to be low-income mothers experiencing disruptive life events. First, they need funds for the procedure. Abortions range from $300 to $12,000, depending on how long you wait. 61% of Americans do not have the funds readily available to cover this emergency procedure. This is the cost before taking into account the funds it takes for travel and accommodation. In addition, some women are still at risk for being fired due to pregnancy. Low-income people are less likely to have jobs that allow for flexible time off and can lose employment in pursuit of the procedure. In the U.S., the states with the lowest minimum wages are also the first to ban abortions. 
It has been found that following the birth of a child, it is well documented that working mothers face a motherhood wage penalty, which entails lower wages than women who do not have a child. To add to the cost, women pe- lack paid leave and cost maternity care, even with insurance. Because of this financial crisis, there are estimated one-fourth of people desiring an abortion are being forced to carry to term. However, the economic side of this issue isn't only about the cost to receive an abortion, but the cost to women after they're forced to carry out an unwanted pregnancy. It leads to a very real inability for women to participate fully in the global economic process. Many experts argue that investing in women's reproductive health will significantly positively impact the global economy. UNDP says that the gender inequality is costing sub-Saharan Africa an average of $95 billion a year. Meanwhile, sub-Saharan Africa has the highest maternal mortality rate in the world as well as high rates of unintended pregnancies, early marriage, and unsafe abortions, which results in thousands of preventable deaths. A 2015 McKinsey report found that if women were able to participate and contribute in the global economy in the same way as men, which can only be achieved when women have the necessary reproductive rights, there could be as much as $28 trillion added to the global GDP. Women's reproductive health has become a hot political issue in countries all over the world, despite it having nothing to do with politics and everything to do with healthcare. This transition to be it becoming a political issue is the root of this becoming a global issue. The politicized nature of abortion issue was compellingly illustrated by the reinstatement of the Mexico City policy, also known as the global gag rule, by U.S. President Donald Trump in 2017 a law that severely restricted aid to organizations that offer abortion services or provide information about abortion. Political candidates all over the world are being elected based on their position on abortion. In Brazil, abortion is a criminal offense. It's only allowed in certain specific circumstances, for example, when a pregnancy is the result of a rape or a mother's life is is threatened. And polls suggest that most Brazilians want the law to stay that way. Jair Bolsonaro is the current president and is running for a second term. He's far right-wing and is seen as an authoritarian in the making, but because he's a staunch opponent of abortion, he is likely to be re-elected for this reason only. Some countries have recently been altering their laws. For example, Colombia's constitutional court this year legalized abortion within the first 24 weeks of pregnancy, and in late 2020, Argentina's Congress voted to legalize in the first 14 weeks. And in Chile, which had a total ban on abortion in 2017, Abortion rights are now included in a new draft of the Constitution that's being drawn up by a People's Assembly. Despite some countries making progress in the field of women's reproductive health, the U.S. has passed nearly 500 laws restricting abortion access since 2011. As I mentioned earlier, many laws are influenced by religion. Poland, like Bolasaro's Brazil, is very Catholic, and it's chipped away at its democratic institutions in recent years. The right-wing nationalist ruling party, referred to as Law and Justice, has a symbiotic relationship with the Catholic Church, and their voting base are largely church-going rural Poles who are very much against abortion. As long as this party stays in power, abortion access will continue to be restricted. Women's reproductive rights have been an issue for many, many years, but recently has increased in attention. Even in the most developed countries, women are lacking necessary health care, which means care in developing countries is far less. The global issue has political, cultural, and economic consequences and causes. The UN has declared that ending gender-based discrimination, reducing preventable maternal mortality, and ensuring access to reproductive health care are goals all countries should meet by 2030, but this doesn't necessarily mean this will happen. In this class this year, I've learned far more than I thought I would. I'm not exactly sure what I thought I would be learning in this class, but it's not what I expected in the best possible way. I was so unaware of so many of the issues we discussed in other parts of the world, and it makes me want to continue to learn more in my own time. And here are my sources.